Welcome everyone to the Ecosystem Project Demo. Today we'll be talking to Cody of Smoothly. If you've ever wondered about what processes you can go through as a solo staker to potentially increase your rewards, or you've been interested in joining a pool, today's your day because Cody's gonna walk us through it. Welcome, Cody. Thanks for having me. Nice to be here. So I guess kind of just to give the background, what is solo staking? Why does it matter? What drew you to it? Uh, yeah, so I guess to define a solo staker, it would be somebody who is running their own uh, execution layer and consensus layer clients, and they have deposited 32 ETH into the beacon chain, and they're also running a validator client. Um, and all this is, you know, I guess you could kind of use the term home staker as well. Uh, we want, you know, in the truest sense, it would be nice if everybody was, you know, running this on their own hardware at home uh, to, you know, to make the network more decentralized. Um, and, you know, that, I guess that, is, that is what we love for everybody to be doing, but, you know, there are big entities out there who have a, a large uh, portion of the stake. So the more solo stakers we have on the network, the better. Yeah, definitely. And we've seen, you know, between restaking uh, protocols and Lido and just the general centralization with with big uh, actors in the space definitely is valuable to have more solo stakers. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and that's the reason why we wanted to make a pool like this is because not only can we, you know, uh, can everybody's rewards be pulled together, but we're also hoping to get you know, donations from ecosystem projects to kind of incentivize solo staking and, and make it the most, you know, profitable way to stake. That would be, that would be the best. Then we'd get more solo stakers on the network. So. Yeah, definitely. There's been a lot of discussion around aligning incentives to, yeah, for sure. you know, have solo stakers be more and more popular. Um, how do you see like a smoothing pool? We'll go into some definitions soon as a way for uh, incentives to be more aligned or solo stakers? Yeah, so right now, as a solo staker, you get generally two types of rewards. Um, they can come from either the consensus layer, which would be, you know, every epoch you're attesting to blocks, you get a tiny reward in ETH every, every epoch. Um, you also have uh, block proposals, but those are, those are random. You get consensus layer rewards for those uh, via issuance. And, um, you know, via execution layer rewards, you only, those are tips and MEV that are attached to the block proposal that you produce, that you propose. And, you know, since uh, block proposals are essentially random and like the magnitude of your tips and MEV is also dependent on like network activity, then, um, you know, when you propose a block, you could either get 0 0.001 ETH or you could be one of those guys that got 300 ETH. Um, I don't think a solo staker has actually got one of those big blocks yet, but um, you know, I'm I also run a rocket pool node, and I know the rocket pool smoothing pool has got a few really big blocks, um, and it's nice to celebrate that as a community too. You know, like as soon as we see one of those big blocks come into the pool, um, everybody's like, "Yes, you know, I got I got a portion of that." So, you know, a way to align the incentives would be sorry, incentives would be to, you know, try and get people to fund public, if you can think of solo staking as a public good, you know, I mean, we're all profiting from it because we're receiving issuance in ETH, but um, you could think of solo staking as a, as a public good and, you know, try to get, um, you know, donations from ecosystem projects to, to support solo staking and incentivize it and make it the most profitable way to stake. So that, that's how I see, that's my vision for Smoothly is basically, you know, making solo staking, kind of flipping the incentives and making solo staking the most the most profitable way to stake. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. One other thing to touch on, I guess, is like you know, this isn't. I think app layer smoothing pools aren't going to be needed forever. You know, there's on the roadmap. You know, we're, there's a lot of talk about like MEV burn or MEV smoothing um, coming into the protocol at some point. So. You know, I built, or we built smoothly as kind of a bridge between today and when something like that's enshrined in the protocol. Yeah, yeah, there's been a lot of discussion with like EIP uh, 4788 of like putting the beacon root in the EVM. For sure. And and a lot of that would 
ideally make it easier for people to run these types of pools. And, you know, in the future, if we start getting rid of MVP at the protocol level, you know, maybe the pools don't need to exist anymore, but. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But for now, definitely. yeah, this is, this is what we got. <laughs> yeah, De definitely good. Definitely good. <laughs> um, cool. Well, we can go into a demo, but I just wanted to touch on one thing that you had mentioned, which is the difference in rewards. Right. Mm -hmm. Typically, those consensus layer rewards are those are the new issuance. So it's very stable, very consistent. Um, everyone gets you know close to the same. The block proposal, uh, the block proposer, gets a little bit more, um, but everyone else gets basically about the same. Um, but the execution is the one that has the highest variance, and that is, you know, based on MEV or the time of day or. Uh, inclusion fees and tips, or if there's a hack going on. So there's a lot that yeah. goes into that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're good moving forward, then I am too. Cool. Uh, I guess let's go into the demo. Okay. Sweet. Um, all right. So this is, we just got a refreshed landing page, which, um, and kind of did a whole a rebranding at the same time. Um, and so basically you would just go to, you know, get more info about smoothly, go to the landing page, smoothly.money. And there's, you know, some general information here about the pool, how it works, why you'd want to join, how often rewards uh, are distributed. Um, if you really want to get into the weeds that we have a um, documentation website as well, but from a high level, um, as soon as you join the pool, you begin accruing rewards and those rewards are not claimable until you produce or propose your first block with smoothly with the smoothly contract address as the fee recipient. Um, this is to prevent bad actors from leeching from the pool. Um, we are right now in oracles required because the like you said you, we spoke about before seven eight eight the beacon route it currently is not uh, in the EVM and even when 4788 comes in, uh, you know, when you have basically after the Dankun hard fork, <laughs> um, the beacon route will be in the AVM, but another thing we're monitoring is the validator, validator registrations through the relay API. And so that will still not be available without, without an Oracle. And, you know, only one Oracle, Oracle is needed, but we, you know, felt that I, I didn't want, the ability to, you know, manipulate people's rewards from, you know, the smoothly team itself. So we chose six Oracle operators and um, I can go through them actually. All right, so our six Oracle operators are Anthony Sassano of the Daily Gway, East Taker is also running an Oracle, Crypto Manufacturer, uh, Aestis Relay, and then I myself am running one and my co-founder Noah is running one. And the way it works is that all six Oracle operators need to reach consensus on the state of the validator registrants in order for the contract to update. So, you know, say Noah and I were being malicious and we were like, you know what, we're gonna steal everybody's funds. That's not possible because the four other Oracle operators would reach consensus without us. That's why we went with six and tried to choose some of the most trusted names in the community to do that. Um, as far as fees, we built this as a, I call it a sustainable public good because we charge a 1.5% fee and it's split between all the Oracle operators equally. The Smoothly team doesn't take any, any additional fee. Um, everything we build is open source. You can check it out on GitHub. And, you know, I also built this knowing that, you know, app smoothing pools wouldn't be, uh, you know, maybe irrelevant in, in two to four years after either MEV smoothing or MEV burn is enshrined at the protocol level. We also are running a um, campaign called Slide. It's called, it stands for Social Layer Incentives for Decentralization, basically reaching out to entities uh, in the community to support solo stakers and boost rewards for anybody who's subscribed to the pool. 
Um, okay, well, that is that is not updated. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go to our app. And so this is what our dashboard looks like. And in order to join, you would just connect your wallet. And so I should mention that you either you can either connect your wallet, you can either connect your deposit address, the address you use to deposit 32 ETH to the beacon chain, or you can connect your withdrawal address. Uh, we gave, you know, we allow people to connect with both because you know, maybe your withdrawal address is in cold storage. You don't feel like you can, you want to connect it to, you know, an app. Um, or maybe you set your withdrawal address to an eigenpod because you're, uh, you know, participating in eigenlayer. So in this case, I'm going to connect my deposit address. And also worth mentioning is that uh, all Oracle op operators listen to finalized epochs. So when you submit a transaction uh, through our front end, it obviously gets picked up uh, in the execution layer immediately, but the Oracle operators don't pick it up for 12 minutes. So if you disconnect and reconnect your wallet, you might not see the last transaction that you made. So it's best to uh, either check the hash on Etherscan to make sure it went through or to wait 15 minutes to wait for that epoch to be finalized to see what the status is. And as you can see, I am loaded with validators. So um, this is on Gurley. So I'm feeling I'm feeling Gurley rich. <laughs> um, but so essentially, you would just click subscribe for the validators that you'd like to subscribe to the pool. And you know, make sure that these indexes are the ones you want to, that you would like to subscribe. Read through our documentation. And MEV boost is also required for uh, subscribing to the pool because we monitor that relay registration API to make sure that nobody changes their fee recipient. And if we do uh, see a fee recipient change, that validator is uh, is not included in the current reward cycle. And that's no, there's notification on the dashboard for letting you know that, you know, we've, we've seen a fee recipient uh, address change. Please go update it again, basically. Also worth noting that we don't currently include all relays or we're not monitoring all the relays. Some of the relays we noticed didn't, you know, aren't responding correctly when we, when we query the, the registration API. So click that, uh, you know, make sure you're registered to one of the monitor relays before, before subscribing. And we require a bond be deposited for each validator. It's 0.5 ETH per validator. I'm on Gurley, so these numbers aren't reflective of mainnet, but that's to reduce the incentives for MEV theft. Um, and it's 0.5 ETH per validator. So if you're registering two validators, then you would need to deposit one ETH. And essentially that is to make sure that, you know, we we just reduce the incentives for MEV theft. Um, you know, if you don't have a bond at all, then, you know, you might be, you might want to, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So this is, this goes into some really deep things here. So I don't know how deep I want to get into the weeds with everybody. And we, we had like a, long discussion on that so i don't know mm. i don't know exactly how far i want to go with that um to, just to give like a an idea of what um mev theft is you know people proposing a block with a different uh, fee recipient and then why this is meant to prevent that and worst case scenario your bond gets slashed and you know the people in the pool still get paid out even if you do manage to pull it off which no one has Got it. That no, that is definitely true. I mean, even that's even true with like, you know, Rocket Pool's pool. Um, there's been large yeah. blocks in there, and nobody has, you know, they have a very high bond because they, you know, you're putting up RPL as collateral too. 
Um, mm. Okay. So yeah, the bond the bond is there to prevent MEV theft, meaning that somebody in the pool would change their fee recipient to their own address and take that block for themselves. And they might do this because they are monitoring the either you know network activity and think that it might a big block might be coming, or they're a really sophisticated actor and have some way of knowing what that block reward is in advance and uh, you know stealing it from the pool essentially. And if that were the case, if somebody proposes a block with the wrong fee recipient and their validator is active, then their bond is slashed and it is added to the pool. So, you know, worst case scenario, that validator, that validator who proposed with the wrong fee recipient is slashed, meaning their bond is added to the pool. And if you're a pool participant, then you at least get that 0.5 ETH added to the pool during that proposal. And also the final thing would be to make sure you update your fee recipient and your validator client to this, this pool address. Worth noting, not this pool address because this is on Gurley. So yeah. go to our documentation and look at the all the documentation for mainnet. And that is the address that we use. You change your fee recipient and your validator client. That is own that execution layer rewards are the only rewards that go to that address, which are tips and MEV associated with block proposals. There's no all your other consensus layer, or all your other rewards, like the other consensus consensus layer, go to your withdrawal address. Yeah, so do not set your withdrawal address to the pool. That would be horrible. All your, I mean, unless you'd want to contribute your 32 ETH to the pool, then I guess you know. All right, so I just subscribed these two validators. Right now they are pending. Uh, there's just little icons letting you know what the status is. It says this validators are accruing rewards, but they will not be claim or but they will become claimable upon your next block, block proposal. So on Gurley, we have reward cycles every seven days. On mainnet, it's every 21 days. So you know, after this reward cycle ends, you'll see an increase in your unclaimed rewards here, but they will not be claimable until you actually propose a block with smoothly as the fee recipient. And then going forward, after your validator is active, like this one, you can claim rewards every 21 days. And so in order to claim rewards, you would just click claim and notice that when you click claim, it actually claims the rewards for all active validators. So you don't need to claim rewards individually because that would, you know, we're tr we tried to make it, try to do it in the most gas efficient way. And Gurley can run slow sometimes. Hmm. All right, so successfully claim rewards. You'll see that this validator who's pending didn't have his rewards claimed. Uh, the other two statuses are requested, exit requested. So these two validators, okay, so in order to exit the pool, you need to request an exit. And then when the reward cycle is finished, the contract is updated with that state and you can formally exit the pool. So there's, uh, you have to request an exit first and then when the, re the reward cycle ends, you can actually, you can formally exit the pool. It's done this way to prevent malicious actors from you know, either proposing a block with the wrong fee recipient and then trying to exit the pool before the state is updated. Because if you propose a block with the wrong fee recipient when you're active, your bond is taken from, uh, your bond is added to the pool essentially. So the way that your validator is penalized depends on this, its status. So when your validator is pending, 
any any type of penalty you receive, whether it be missing a proposal or proposing with the wrong fee recipient, uh, the penalty that's applied is your unclaimed rewards are added to the pool. So basically, you just start from scratch again, accruing rewards. Your bond isn't penalized while your validator is pending. That's because, you know, maybe you just had a wrong configuration. Um, and since you can't actually leech any rewards from the pool because you haven't proposed a block with Smoothly as the fee recipient, there's no, no sense in stealing your bond or taking your bond, I guess. But if your validator is active and you can claim rewards from the pool, you are penalized differently. So for your first missed block after you're active, we essentially just give you a warning and let you know, hey, you missed a block. Make sure your configuration is set up properly because if you miss a subsequent block, we will penalize your bond by 0.15 ETH. And at that point, you have the ability to, to top up your bond and um, bring your bring your status with the pool back. Uh, <laughs> um, you'll have the ability to top up your bond and bring your status with the pool back to good. And if you propose a block with the wrong fee recipient when you're active, then your entire bond is taken and it is added to the pool and split between all pool participants. Now, in order to exit the pool, well, you see that all the, <laughs> okay, here we go. In order to exit from the pool, all you need to do is request an exit. And this lets the Oracle operators know that that validator would like to formally exit from the pool at the end of this current reward cycle. So although you're requesting an exit, it actually formally doesn't go through until the state is updated at the end of the reward cycle. And this notice lets you know that if your validator is active and you're exiting, you can still claim your accrued rewards even after you exit. But if you're requesting an exit for a pending validator, all its re accrued rewards will be added to the pool. Okay, successfully requested exit. So then I exited these validators last reward cycle. So I'm actually able to now withdraw my bond from the pool and I'll have claimed all my rewards and withdraw my bond. And you know, maybe I want to play the lotto again and set my free recipient to my own address and hope for a lottery block. And that's that's easy. You just click withdraw bond and click confirm. It's worth noting that withdrawing the validator can only be done on uh, you know, a single transaction per validator. You, can, you can't bundle uh, the bond uh, withdrawals. Yeah, so Smoothly is comprised of essentially three things. A uh, pool contract, and that's where, that's the fee recipient address that you said where all of the rewards come into the pool. And it's also comprised of the governance contract. And that's where the Oracle operators submit their vote on the state of all registrants. And that's done every 21 days. The third thing is the Oracle operators themselves. And they run a CLI. And we all, you know, a peer-to-peer -peer network, essentially, where we all communicate uh, the state of reg registrants between each other. And we monitor the beacon chain or the beacon node API, as well as the pool contract, as well as the relay registration API. And so we, the Oracle operators submit a vote to the governance contract every 21 days with the state of the pool. And it, during that vote, the pool contract is updated with the state of registrants. So if you requested an exit during that time, you can formally request an exit after, or you can withdraw your bond after that state is updated. If you propose a block during that reward cycle, then after that state is updated, you can claim your rewards. 
And if you receive a penalty for missing a block during that time, you can um, top up your bond after that reward cycle concludes. So we got a smart contract audit that's available in GitHub. It was done by Pashov, who's a solo contract auditor, and he did a great job. You can see all his findings there. Um, and we acknowledged and fixed all of the, uh, the bugs that, that he found. Um, as far as what Smoothly you know, sees itself doing in the future, um, you know, I know that we just launched to two days ago, this is being recorded the 25th. So we launched on the 23rd. Um, and so we're actually just, you know, just now getting some validators joining, but it's hard to not think what is the next step for us. And so one goal for me would be to use that EIP 4788. And um, since the beacon route is, will be available in the EVM, um, you know, essentially we could, almost get rid of the Oracle network if we didn't need if we didn't need that relay registration API. But that's also being worked on um, in the MEV boost network where there is a proposal put forth by Alex Stokes to include the relay registration API in blob space. So that won't be available, you know, right after uh, Dencoon, but hopefully, you know, in the next year or something uh, that that would be available. And at that point, it could be completely trustless and oracleless. So you know that's 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 how I envision smoothly because you know the oracle operators are kind of a burden on the network, and it requires everybody to stay online and be in consensus. And if it could be done in a completely trustless trustless fashion, that would be a lot better. And you know, essentially at that point, we wouldn't need the one point five percent fee paid to oracle operators. It could be a true public good and not charge any fee at all. Yeah, I mean that's that's super cool. I think all the work that you guys are doing is fantastic. You know, it's pretty pretty transparent that you guys are very dedicated and value aligned with the whole solo staking community. You know, a lot of the people who are going to be joining this are going to be solo stakers who think about the long term impact of uh, decentralization and kind of fighting the the centralization efforts of some other sources that exist. Um, so I think it'll be really cool. You're working with other people and your pool's a bunch of cool people who uh, want to contribute to solo staking. So yeah, absolutely. That's that, that's mission. why we picked it. Yeah, why we picked those Oracle operators for sure. I felt like they're you know completely value aligned, and I know that's a meme now, but they I think they truly are. So yeah, yeah. And you know I I really love the idea of you guys slowly um, acknowledging the fact that this pool will not be necessary moving forward. Like as MEV no longer is, you know, as prevalent as it is today, or at least there's an enshrined method of kind of dissipating its effects and, you know, slowly moving to a state where we don't rely on centralized oracles. All that is really cool. Cool. Yeah, thanks. I'm, you know, that's, it's funny because when I first started building, I kind of knew that that was what was going to happen in the long term. So some people are like, well, why do you want to build something that's not going to be relevant in, in a few years? And it's like, well, as a solo staker myself, it's something that I wanted, you know, I mean, that, that's how it all started from talking to people in the staker discord and members of the um, members of these staker. They were like, yeah, somebody, somebody needs to build this. And, you know, we've been building, you know, it's been almost 18 months now which seems like a long time, but you know, we've been live on Gurley since uh, January of 23. Um, so it's taken, it's taken, it's taken a long time to get here, but mm. you know, at the end of the day, I didn't want, well, number one, we didn't have a lot of funding. So, uh, you know, it was a small team and, you know, it just took a long time to get it, to get it right and to get it working properly. And, you know, that's, you know, the worst thing you can do is launch something before it's ready and then it all falls apart. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why we waited so long. Yeah. Cool. I, I saw that you had a whole, um, beta period where you had a whole bunch of stakers join on, uh, the Gorley network. What did you, what did you learn from that, uh, you know, carried over to the final product? Um, well, number one on Gurley 
it is just the network itself is a lot less reliable. We had a lot of uh, finalization problems. Um, and what we learned was that it, our, our software is actually really, the Oracle software is actually really, uh, really reliable. And even in the event, um, like recently when the Dentune hard fork happened on Gurley, there wasn't finalization for, I believe, four or five hours. And the Oracle network um, just kept waiting and waiting for a finalized epoch. It didn't, it didn't fall over. And then once that finalization, uh, finalized epoch came in, all of the epochs before that, you know, we, we called all those uh, epochs from basically when finalization stopped to the head of the chain and caught all those block proposals. So everything worked as intended. So that was actually one of the big things we wanted to watch was what happened during during Genkun and everything worked everything worked properly. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, cool. I think that's that's really all I had uh, left. But if you have any words for the solo staking community or for people who see solo staking as a public good, I'll give you I'll give you the stage. Sounds good. Yeah, if you're if you're a solo staker out there who you know has had a dry spell and you're looking to get uh access to you know essentially the mean mev reward month or every 21 days then you know feel free to join smoothly and you know if you if you want to keep playing lottery then that you know that's fine too we got we're just we're, we're just here to give you access to the tool you know we're not forcing anybody to use it so um that, that's truly what it's here for cool and I guess one last thing is how do people support you guys if they just want to help make sure that this is a sustainable public good? That's a good question. So we have been in uh, Gitcoin round 18 and 19, and we'll be in every Gitcoin round going forward. Um, and, you know, all of the funds we received in Gitcoin round 19, I dedicated to the pool. So maybe in this, in this round 20, maybe we'll, we'll keep some to, so that we can keep operating. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, I'm sure that we had retro uh, optimism's retro retroactive public goods round hasn't been um, hasn't been announced yet, but we'll definitely apply there as well. Yeah, I guess you know one other thing that I thought about mentioning. Um, yeah, we we're looking for you know members of the community, solo staking community, to kind of contribute, like either set up some Dune dashboards. Um, you know, to see block proposals coming in and, you know, number of registrants or, you know, a bot to monitor uh, donations or blocks coming into the pool. So um, since this is kind of like a community led grassroots protocol, it would be great to see some people come forward to contribute in that way. Awesome. Well, best of luck and uh, thank you for coming on. Well, it was nice to meet you. Bye.